Hey guys, Meet Ronald's Chris Tomer here with this Wednesday morning mountain weather update. Let's go to radar first out of the west. This is our next storm system, rain and snow, depending on elevation, but quite a bit of snow for the Pacific Northwest and parts of BC out of this storm system. And eventually this will move down and into the interior, but really favoring a lot of the Pacific Northwest, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming this, this time around. Um, let me just show you what it looks like up here. Uh, this is Whistler. You've got snow coming down up there at uh, the Roundhouse Lodge, snow coming down on Blackcomb Mountain and snow, and they already cleared the snow stake for the day, but there was at least a few inches there on that snow stake when I looked earlier this morning. Uh, and there it is, just wet down at the base area, 2,100 feet. So it is elevation dependent, but really nice to see that snow up there at uh, Whistler. And this is going to be quite a stretch for Whistler too, especially mid-mountain and higher. So we're going to get the best accumulation. So let me set the table here on the water vapor. And again, when you see the oranges and the reds, that's your drier air loft. The whites and the blues, that is your moisture. And there's our area of low pressure sending out that, that wave of moisture out ahead of it. So that's the initial storm system. There's another one behind it that will come right in on its coattails. And, and this time around, you know, I mentioned this last night. It looked like at some point some of this energy may go to the south and turn up through New Mexico and Colorado. It looked like the timing was off yesterday, last night, and it still looks a little off today, but it's come back around just a touch. So we'll look at all that and where these systems move coming up um, in this forecast. Here are my bullet points and really just reiterating the storm system that you see in the Pacific Northwest is a long lasting one, 13, 14, 15, and 16 with far reaching effects across the West. And then that Southern track timing is still somewhat in question, 11, 17, 18, 19, 20, at some point in there, some of that energy from the north helps to draw that southern track storm in and even a little bit of tropical moisture between those time periods. So here are my key dates, best odds of snowfall for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, and Interior BC. Um, so for example, Interior BC, you've got moderate to heavy snow accumulation um, from 1114 through 1115, uh, and then you have some heavy snow accumulation coming back with the next storm system in the afternoon, 11-16 and 11-17. In Colorado, your best shot of snow could be moderate is 11-19 and 11-20. So you're really going to have to wait. We've got a, a dry stretch ahead until we get to 11-19 in Colorado. Let me show you the forecast for Alta and how this storm system, these storm systems are going to um, affect Alta. So this is the meteogram forecast, Alta, at about 87, 8,800 feet. Um, notice it's mainly dry down here in the snow column, the precip column, until we get to the afternoon of Friday the 15th through Friday night into Saturday morning the 16th. And it's continuing to snow through the morning on Saturday. So this is not the total accumulation, but it is for this short time period. It's got at least six inches. So thinking probably six to eight inches for Alta, Snowbird, Solitude, Brighton, late Friday into early Saturday, and maybe even a little bit beyond that as well. But until we get to that point, for example, um, uh, this afternoon, high temps at about 34, uh, tomorrow 37, 38, 32, at about 8,800 feet, and totally sunny until we get to that next storm system. Okay, let me show you a bit of Colorado's forecast. So here's a time height forecast for humidity, the next 72 to 80 hours, slice through the vertical atmosphere. Uh, the timeline's at the bottom, and this is for snow mass. In western Colorado, snow mass, Aspen, Buttermilk, the Highlands, all there in the West Elks, and it's just a lot of dry air. That's what the yellow and oranges show on this, uh, this forecast. It's just dry, and like I said, it's a dry stretch with a waiting game until probably 11-18, 11-19, and 11-20. And, and we'll see. If we can get the southern track component to time up a little bit better, then the numbers will go up. But it's gonna be a waiting game. Okay, let me talk a bit about the jet stream. So here it is, close of business today. You can see the big dip in the jet in the Pacific Northwest and then that moves in. And again, it's gonna take its time. It moves down south into, into California and affects the Sierra just a little bit. It's 11.14, there's 11.15 still sitting, 11.16 still there. Now here's a key moment. New storm system hitting the Pacific Northwest, energy on the southern branch. You can see the little cutoff low. How far north are we gonna draw that? So there's 11.18, that moves through. 
storm system drops in from the Pacific Northwest, and, and you can see the trough swinging through. Now, on the tail end of this, does that develop into an area of low pressure? Does this southern branch deliver anything significant during this time period? Don't know yet. The timing looks to be just a little bit off. But that's 1120. You can see there may be some development through Colorado and New Mexico in 1120. And then it moves through and then we're back to high pressure ridging across the west. All right, looking at the, uh, the forecast radar and the satellite, by 5.30 this afternoon, starts to move down towards California, the Tahoe area, Shasta, um, Pacific Northwest getting hit, that snow moving into parts of central and northern Idaho, northwest Montana, and there it is on 11.14. Not quite done. Look at the Sierra getting another shot of snow with some energy coming in. Then that moves into the interior and through the Intermountain West, and it kind of fades there on 11.16, 11.17, but look to the south, 11.17. You can see the low developing across the four corners, New Mexico, southern Colorado. Um, so the forecast today brings that up, and it does brush extreme parts of southern Colorado and northern New Mexico, but it's not a square hit, and the timing is not perfect. Another storm system coming in on the backside, and there it is, moving down through the Inner Mountain, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado. Watch what happens on the southern end of this, 1119 and 1120. Do we get an area of low pressure th that develops on the tail end of that? Not sure yet. So we've got two potential sort of like areas of low pressure that could hang there with poor timing. Okay, my latest snow forecast looks like this. All of today through tomorrow, potentially up to 10 there for Mount Shasta um, and up towards uh, Bachelor and uh, Baker, Rainier, Whistler, could see six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 inches. Potentially the same through parts of interior BC. That's where the biggest stuff's gonna be, and it's probably gonna clip Schweitzer. Okay, let's go to the second time period. So this is 1115 through 1122. So there's a little bit of influence on the southern branch. That's why there is some accumulation for northern New Mexico, southern Colorado. Otherwise, for Colorado, the best snow is in the central and northern mountains, anywhere from four to eight inches. Pretty good stuff for the Tetons. You get clipped by at least two or three storm systems. Could be looking at 8 to 16 inches. Jackson Hole, Grand Targhee, and even Big Sky, Yellowstone. Um, in the Sierra, pretty light, 2 to 4 in this time period. 1 to 2, maybe even 3 feet for the Pacific Northwest. Down the Cascades, the High Cascades, and the Volcanoes. And potentially a foot up there in the parts of Revelstoke and Red Mountain. Elsewhere, 4 to 8 inches through interior B.C., Looking good at Schweitzer, you could see a foot of snow there. So that's an exciting time period. There's just a lot of moving parts, and we'll have to see how everything times out um, in future updates. I'll take you back to the first time period again. All of today through tomorrow, everything is sort of stuffed up into the Pacific Northwest. And then the second time period, everything expands with more activity and maybe even some southern branch action. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.